Nyasa means renunciation, and sannyasa means perfect or complete renunciation. Thus, sarva karma sannyasa means perfect renunciation of all action. The renunciation being in the form of knowledge itself. This knowledge is not possible with a certain mind. Such a mind is accomplished by karma yoga, performing action with a proper attitude as we saw in the previous chapter and we'll see again in this chapter. Karma yoga en enables you to give up all karmas in the sense that it becomes a means for sarva karma sannyasa. <clears throat> So why is it why is it called perfect perfect uh, uh, or complete renunciation? Why is it called perfect or complete renunciation? What would be the opposite per, uh, imperfect and incomplete renunciation? That's the opposite. Because it's saying perfect and complete, so that means there must be an imperfect and incomplete renunciation. What makes the difference? That means Raga Dvesha incomplete parola renunciation means even though he calls himself sannyasi or renunciates, he still is influenced by Raga Dvesha. He still hasn't gone away. Okay. And that's the reason he is not exactly sannyasi. He is he's not happy in that state. Uh, let's look at it. Oh, yeah, the, the angle is correct, okay? Uh, Ragas Veshas are no longer affecting the person that is a Sarva Karma Sanyasi. But there is one thing, I remember this renunciation, this perfect and complete renunciation, he says, he says, in the form of knowledge itself. Yes. Like yes. he knows his Akarta? That's correct. The, the Akarta, Akarta Tvam is gone. Akarta Tvam is gone. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, you see, if, if a person is a sannyasi or a karma yogi, the sense of kartatvam is still there. Because of, that's what I mean, because of raga dvesha and stuff like that. Yeah, so, so because kartatvam is there, then raga dvesha are still functioning there. And the person, he is an enjoyer, it's also the bhakti. Vokti, right? Mm -hmm. So, so incomplete or imperfect renunciation would be the opposite. It would be someone that it takes on the cloth, goes to a ritual and says, I'm not going to be, you know, but then he still has a sense of duration. Now, he's, he's going for, you know, his, his pursuit, his sadhana, his self, his knowledge. But it is not accomplished. You see, the, 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 the fellow has not dropped the shadow. He's still involved in the shadow. He thinks the shadow is himself. In other words, the hankar is there. The identity is still with the not self. That's what karta means. You know, the identity is still on the doer. Now, this sarva karma sannyasi then, does it belong only to the sannyasi? Okay, uh, who can be a Sarva Karma Sanyasi? In other words, perfect and complete renunciation. Uh, any one of you. Anyone. That's right, yeah, that's correct. Also, Kamya Karmi also. That is Kamya Karmi. No, well, Kamya Karmi is someone that is not a Karma Yogi. Yeah. But then we are, are we Karma Yogis now? Well, that, that's a question. It depends what, where, the, where the commitment <laughs> is. It is kind of confusing because see, you feel karma yogi is the one who follows dharma and then, you know, I mean, we know all that, but I don't know if we are perfectly at that. A person can follow dharma and, and not be a karma Radha yogi. Vesha, you have to be per oh, I don't think I have reached that <laughs> Okay. <laughs> now, this is You're a good question. Yeah. It's a good question. You know, think about it. Think about it. So here is this person, you know, any one of us that is functioning in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, and then the question is, you know, who is uh, Kamya Karmi and who is a 
That's why I call him a yogi. Now, uh, the, the karma yogi is still is, is going to the Purisharthas. Purisharthas means, you know, he's still seeking artha, which is security and all that stuff. But, you know, he's doing it, his aim, his focus is on, is on the pursuit of self-knowledge. And, 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 and committed to self-knowledge, then he, he's in, in, in the process of a, attaining a mind that will be fit for self-knowledge. That's a kind of yogi. And, and for that, the person then takes into account Ishara, is a, is a karma father data, the giver of the results. And not only that, he sees Ishara in Dharma, so he aligns himself with Dharma. Now, uh, so that will be a karma yogi. So the follow is his, his intention or her intention is absolutely committed to the pursuit of self knowledge. Now, the other person could still be a Dharmi a Dharmi person. Okay? It says it's still Dharmi the, the how you call this the the, the Kamikarta. And he acts according to Dharma, you know, religiously and this and that. Why? Because he's not seeking self knowledge necessarily. He might be seeking what? Heaven. Heaven. Okay. He's not a karma yogi. He's seeking, you know, uh, still Arthur and Kama. He wants to cure, you know, uh, heaven so he can enjoy heaven. Moral, morality is also his, uh, his pursuit also. But it's for the sake of Punya Papa. That's all it is. <laughs> See the idea? And he might be a good person in which uh, Ragadvesha doesn't control too much. You see what I'm talking about? You know, he's not under the sway positive of Ragadvesha for the sake of heaven. And remember that in heaven you still have, you still have, uh, you know, uh, this Arsala and Kama. That's included in that. Now, he sees death as moksha. He sees heaven as moksha, right? Normally. That's a, a religious uh, attitude, salvation. And, uh, but, but the karma yogi, you know, doesn't take heaven into account. He doesn't want heaven. Because he's 70 knows, now he's been unfolded in knowledge. The fellow is, is getting it clearer. But one thing he knows, that heaven is something he's not in, for sure. <laughs> and then one day, maybe, through, you know, proper, you know, dharma, life, and all that, then he will one day enjoy heaven, so he'll enter into heaven. And the person is that discernment, Viveka. Now watch. What's the Viveka? He says, hey, wait a minute, I'm going to be going into something. I'm not in it. So if anything you, anything you go into is something that is not there yet, so it is still limited in time and space and causation. So he doesn't want that. He wants the ultimate reality. So moksha, and then he doesn't see moksha as, <coughs> as at the end after death. He sees that moksha is in, the, is in every one of the purushasas. Remember what we talked about? He says, if I am if I'm if I'm looking, looking for security, I don't want security itself. I want to be free from insecurity. If I'm seeking for 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 pleasure or, or kama, it's not kama itself that I'm seeking for. Is is for for to be free from you know, discomfort. So then moksha becomes the bottom line. That's the karma yogi. That's why I was doing this before. See, here's the karma yogi. Functioning in life is Artha da, Dharma, you know, Artha Kama and Dharma, and then Moksha at the end. Literally at the end. <laughs> you know, when the person dies. Now, the, the, the person that develops some Viveka, he's still, you know, uh, living a life that is Dharmic. He's still taking Ishwara into account. But now, the person is turning around. Look at this, please. Remember we did this? Now, at the forefront, moksha is a, is a pursuit, and moksha in terms of knowledge. So the person needs that if he's going to do anything, it has to be within the realms of, because he wants to be fit for self-knowledge. See the idea then? So uh, Kami Akarmi is not seeking moksha in, in this sense. A Kami Akarmi is still waiting to see what the Shastra or the Veda tells him to do or not to do. Here's the things to do, 
and here's the things to avoid. Remember that? Here's the things to do. You know, do rituals of this and this and that, prayers and all that, do good. And here's the thing not to do. Don't steal, don't cheat, don't lie. And and then you then you gain the, the, the punya for the for your goal. And the goal is what? Heaven. That's that's the whole purpose. That's the coming academy. The karma yogi, you know, is now that I know something, he's going for the bottom line. That's the difference. He's still self control and everything is there. But it's for the sake of being fit for self knowledge. That's why he's saying right here at the end. He said, This knowledge is not possible without a certain mind. See, this knowledge is not possible without a certain mind. Okay, and then, uh, and such a mind is accomplished by karma yoga, which means performing action with a proper attitude, as we saw in the previous chapter, and we'll see again in this chapter. So, if we want to categorize ourselves individually, personally, each one, it's only one individually that can categorize oneself. <laughs> you see the idea? You know, many, many kids go to school and college, and they're going through the motions. But very few people are going there for the sake of knowledge. Well, yes, we have a degree, but they don't necessarily want to, are not hungry for knowledge so much. They just want to get the, the grace and so on and so on to get rid of it. I see, well, other people are very committed to knowledge, you know, like that, you know, and, and, uh, it's, and the grace come by themselves, you know, if knowledge is there. You see, but well, most people just go there, you know, just play lip service to education. You see, that's the difference. They want to go there because they're free from the parents and they want to go have fun. <laughs> Nobody's saying anything. You see, that's the whole idea. Okay, so only... Only God and, and I know, and my wife maybe. <laughs> you see, but even that is not. It's very subjective. Very, very, very personal. Now, question is then. Let me let me ask myself. Uh, what do I want? And then I ask myself, what do I want? And I say, okay. And then why do I want that? What would be? What am I going to get from that? And that could be anything out of life. And uh, so, the what I want will be in terms of what I understand. That's that's going to be valuable, right? What I want is something usually that is valuable to me. So, uh, in, in terms of my mind, you know, what is my mind picked up to be valuable? And uh, and, is, and is, am I committed to that? Am I am I aiming at that? See the idea? I, I might just want to be able to learn this thing, you know, to be able to wrangle it. You know, to have an audience, you know. <laughs> That's all. Is, uh, is heaven a simplification of more or less the end goal of the common man rather than the common yogi who's his knowledge, his knowledge is so uh, in deep. He's not no longer paying attention to heaven. Right. A karma yogi is uh, heaven is not uh, is not an issue. Right. For, See the idea? For a karma yogi, heaven is not an issue. Yes. I think for a karma yogi, it's not even aware of this. Like I, I didn't know anything about this. That's correct. This. That's correct. So. That's correct. This knowledge is not. Is not uh, is not common. That's the thing, and uh, even the, the the pundits, you know, uh, mm -hmm. themselves sometimes you know don't have this commitment. And uh, a spiritual this this commitment to self knowledge, you call it spiritual. We just call it spiritual. You know, for for self knowledge, you know, it's it's not common. It's not common. Very few. And because, because, and because it most of the time is misinterpreted. Uh, I was I was 
talking today with Clarine, for example, Sony. He's been studying with me for many, many, many years now. And at the beginning, when he first started, and his father found out, you know, that he was taking Vedanta. You know, he was a very educated fellow, and he went to universities and all that, got his PhD and all that stuff. Now this guy is studying Vedanta, my guy is going to become a sannyasi. <laughs> he's going to become a... And people will tell you, they say, hey, how come you're studying that stuff? You're not a sannyasi yet. You know, you have to wait for the Harikolis, the different stages to go through. And, and, and his father really thought that he was going to take off because he was studying Vedanta. She saw there's misinformation about it. So people don't even want to touch the subject because they don't know, they don't understand. And, and I think that the, the beauty of it is that, that people like Swami Chimayananda, Dainanda, and some of the teachers have come to make this clear. And that means that uh, you're not excluded from that. As a matter of fact, you know, every human being wants that, whether they realize it or not. Every human being. But it requires Viveka, some discrimination to do that. And the Viveka comes the consequence of a, of, a, of a slap in the face by life or by association of ideas of what the heck is this about? And most of us, even when we get a slap in the face by life, we hit the wall, you know, uh, you know, we don't, we don't seek it. And if we seek it, it's, it's not available like that, easy. Because nobody has a shingle someplace saying, you know, self-knowledge school. <laughs> See, like that. It's not something you find in schools. See the idea? So that's why you, you, most people don't know about it. And it's not that somebody's keeping a secret, it's just that it's not that, that obvious. Even though everyone, 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 everyone is seeking that. And everything they do, all the things they avoid, because they want moksha. But they don't realize it. They think that they don't want this or that, or they want this or that. That's difficult to, to discern. So you need to have someone or something. Sometimes books will make people think. And they get somehow introduced to this thing here, and they become seekers like that. And but then, again, it's, a, it's grace. It's, it's God's grace that somehow we are able to have access to the right information. Very difficult. Think about your friends. You know, they might even question, what the heck do you do something nice like that? How come you don't come? Oh, we have a class. Come on. You know, it's going to be fun here. And then you, then you come. You've been coming for so many years, you know. That's people that love you, you know, might even worry about you. You know, <laughs> I said, what is wrong with these guys? Anyway, that's what that, so that's, it hasn't been available, that's all. Okay, let's go on, to continue on. The necessity of karma yoga. You want to read the next part? Sure. Necessity of karma yoga. With a desire for moksha, one can take to a life of renunciation called vidisa sannyasa. In this type of sannyasa, sarva karma sannyasa has not yet taken place, but certain duties are given up so that knowledge can be pursued. However, if the person has not taken care of his or her ragadveshas before taking sannyasa, he or she will not be able to pursue knowledge to the exclusion of all else. Okay, is that clear? Is that clear? What is he saying here? He calls it vividisha. That's taking a, a life of what? A life of renunciation. Okay, but then he says something has not yet taken place. That's right. Something has not yet taken place. In other words, Sarva Kama Sanyasa has not taken place. No perfect and complete Sanyasa. Renunciation. Now, in order to pursue knowledge like that, certain things have to be give up, given up. In other words, you know, so to be full, a full-timer, as they call it. But if a follower has not, has not uh, neutralized the right wishes to a high degree, then, then that life is not for him or her. In other words, in the pursuit of knowledge, she's not going to be there. <coughs> So 
So you can want, you can desire moksha. You can figure out that that is what you want. And you can take up the cloth. But if Ragadvesha are not being under control, but it's going to go home and get married and get a business and <laughs> pay your bills or whatever. Moksha, the way I look at it, Moksha is a state of mind. Everyone it's not a state of mind, no. It's not a state of mind. Okay. Now, you can take it relatively, okay, well, uh, let's say like the guy, when you go outside, Moksha means that there will be no policeman coming after you. It's a state of mind. So you're, so you're calm about that, meaning you're okay. Mm -hmm. But no, it doesn't mean that. Moksha means to, uh, to abide in non-duality. Moksha is to recognize that you are the, you're the, the, the content of everything. Moksha, yeah. That's what moksha is. You know, moksha means freedom from what? From the mistake. You're not two and one. Yeah. Excuse me? You're not two and one. That, that's that's, that's right. Not that's, yeah. yeah. So Self-knowledge. That's moksha. But, but, the, but somebody wants to... Yeah. Well, a heaven, in 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 a common simple, uh -huh. simpler way, is a place. It's but a place. it may not be a place. It is not a place. It is a place in a concept, but it may it's not a place in to visit. It's you know I think there is a difficulty in moksha and and, uh, and swarga and heaven are two different. Yeah. Goals or end goals or whatever. Well, you see, for the for the religious person that follows the Veda uh -huh. and the Karma Kanda part of it, uh, it's called a, a, a Paravidya. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's when heaven comes into the picture, and heaven can become for that person moksha. Mm -hmm. That's why they say rest in peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we now you're free. You know, they say now all oh, the person at least now is free. They say that, isn't it? Why? Because the person died. So. In the religious point of view, yeah, well, that could be moksha for that person. But this is not the moksha that the Vedanta or the, or the yeah, this last part of the Veda relates to. Moksha means that the, the mistake is completely erased. The mistake, that's what's called realization. Realization means, oh, wow, it's a, you know, I thought that I was a separate individual. The whole, I am the whole. The way he recognizes himself as H2O, and he sees himself everywhere. That's what moksha means. You know, it was a mistake. It's gone. That's what it is, moksha. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But in, in, a, in a simpl simplifying it, moksha, for someone who in a what you call it, situation, that is, it could be any age. But a swarga or a heaven, basically, we are all led to believe at the end of your life. Right, you know, right. So there is a big time difference with that's correct. That's correct. understanding the, what it is. Yeah, that's right. And uh, and it is because it is because you know uh, the, the the idea of, of oneness of, of you know the totality is one you know is not there. Mm -hmm. So we still see myself and God. Mm -hmm. So this moksha can occur before you die. You can you know this, this mok moksha is a fact now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But the other moksha, that's the, the other moksha, the death, yeah. that, that's just as a... For the karmi karmi. Yeah, karmi karmi, yeah. The person that's seeking, you know, uh, a life of religion only, without knowing, <coughs> it's called aviveki. You know what I call it? It's called yes. aviveki. Aviveki. Okay. The person that's, that's guided by beliefs. And uh, here, the person, that, the, if there is a belief, in, in Brahman as being yourself, but that is a belief that can be confirmed, that can be verified, and it's a belief while verification takes place. Mm -hmm. The other one is a belief, you know, that cannot be verified. <laughs> that's, you know, that's, that's the difference. So we're not talking about the religious moksha that we normally know about, the normal everyday moksha or salvation or heaven thing. There's nothing about that. Okay? So this karma yoga is a preparatory means. It's called sadhana. Right? It's called, you know, because anything that you, that you, that you, you pursue 
with, a, with an end, it becomes sadhana. See, see, sadhana means something that needs to be, that, that is pursued with an end. Something to be achieved. Something to be achieved, that's correct. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Okay, uh, taking sannyasa. Taking sannyasa is always possible because it is open to choice. If you are a mumukshu and there is a choice between a life of renunciation of activity and a life of action, why should you perform activity? Since you are only interested in moksha, which can be gained by pursuit of knowledge alone, why would you not take sannyasa and pursue knowledge alone? Because if you have not taken care of pragadveshas, it is not possible to do so. Okay, there it is. The key is Raghadvesha here. That's correct, Raghadvesha. And what does he mean by taking care of Raghadvesha? What does he mean by that? Neutralizing. Yeah, yeah. Neutralizing meaning? They don't play games on you. That means you don't, you're not under their wings. That's correct. It's called mastery. Mastery. Remember we talked about instinctive, mechanical, mm -hmm. instantaneous, deliberate, deliberate, yeah. spontaneous. You know, um, instinctiveness is mean according to that, feels good, then I do it. <laughs> right? It's just instinctive. Or, or, you know, mechanical, again. You know, there is these likes and these likes, and I just go by, you know, by them regardless, you know? Like, what the heck? That's, that's instinctive. Now, now, deliberateness means what? So the urge comes. Mm -hmm. You know, instinctive urge, you know, I'm a male as a female, and so on and so on. You know, I have a, a desire for, for sweet, and there's sweet, and so on and so on. Okay, or I have a, a how do you call it, an aversion to work, and, I, <laughs> and, and, and so there's work and I have a problem. Okay, that. Hey, that means a person then, even if he has aversion for something, you know, he does not Deliberate. get ruled by the aversions. Aversion means mm -hmm. I don't like it. You know, even if the person has a, a an attraction for something, you know, the person doesn't go for the attraction. In other words, attractions and aversions don't rule the person's life. If a person doesn't have not mature, evolved, you want to call it, to the point in which these attractions and aversions, you know, uh, don't rule the person, the little person has no business pursuing sannyasa. Now, and then where do you, where, in what field do you deal with those? You feel you do it in the field of everyday living, taking care of, you, of life, you know, in in, a, in life contacts. You see the idea? Let's say, for example, uh, I give up. I give up being a millionaire. You know, I'm not a millionaire. So I can give it up. <laughs> you see the idea? I give up being a millionaire. In other words, you know, you cannot give us something you don't have. So you're in the midst of it. Now you're a millionaire, and then you can give it up. Why? Because now you have it, isn't it? So in the middle of working, in the middle of living, in the middle of relating, so those rugged wishes manifest, and then I can rise above them. So this is an exercise to rise above rugged Now, it is a, you can call it a skill.